Hello YouTube, welcome to another workbench video. Um, my name's Matt and I'll be talking you through today soldering. Mainly soldering brass, so etched brass kits, etc. I have in front of me a chassis which I've already built, which is a Kays or Kayser kit chassis. This is from Metropolitan Bear Peacock A Class, the one in the London Transport Museum. Um, for those of you who know the K's kits, they were a good idea, but were pretty crap. Um, and this one is no exception. I built this one and it ran okay originally. Um, as you can see it hasn't got the original motor in, this is a high level uh, motor. It has new wheels because the wheels that came with the kit were rusty. And I basically modified the chassis to make it look like a bare peacock chassis. Um, it ran okay originally, and then something developed, and I'm not sure what's moved or changed, but the chassis is no longer square. So either a hole or something has moved, or the screws have come untightened, um, which it doesn't appear to have, and the chassis has moved out of alignment. When I say alignment, what that means is basically, if I put it on the deck, you can hear or see it rocks very slightly which gives it uneven running qualities and the running qualities are quite poor. Um, so the problem is I need a new chassis. Now these kits are no longer made anymore and I think IKB took them over or took some of the castings etc but sadly they're no longer around either and the kit is no longer in production which is a shame because they're very very popular. I bought this kit off a chap on an internet forum, never built, still an original packaging etc. Now my search and my questioning came to a result finally and I found a new chassis. These are produced by Alan Gibson. Um, these are milled chassis sides for a Metropolitan A-Class. Um, and luckily they fit, they're the same length, um, well not overall, because they're obviously a little bit longer. Um, so some cutting will need to be done to cut off the front section just in front of the hole for the brake rigging. Because the case kit has a kind of subframe, so a subframe with all the uh, cylinders and smoke box mounted to it. So we need to cut off the front of that and just use this part here, which is the same length as this one here. Now obviously we're going to be soldering this together, so what we need is some solder and a decent iron, a 25 watt iron. I have an Antex 25 watt iron which is good enough for this. Um, so before we start what you need is your chassis, have two chassis sides here. Um, and also you need some double O spacers. Now these are the spacers from Alan Gibson. They are a little wide so I'm going to cut them down a little bit. I've taken 1.4 mil off each side. I've enlarged the holes to match the holes on my um, body which I have. So these will need to be bent into shape, filed and soldered onto here. Now what kind of things do we need? Obviously I've said we need an iron, which is 25 watt iron. We need some solders, 145 degree solder or 188 solder. And we need some flux. Now I use this Gaze Master um, flux. I usually use some stuff from Aline's Emporium. But uh, it requires quite a lot of shipping costs to get it over here. Um, I don't never know, they might refuse it anyway because it might be some endangerment to some wildlife or something. Um, but um, that's all you need basically, solder, iron, some flux and a paintbrush to apply the flux and then we can get going. Um, you also need some brass bearings for the, uh, the wheels and the axles. So let's get started shall we? So let's move on to the soldering. So the first step I'm going to do here is to solder in the bearings into the chassis. The holes have been opened up very slightly to accept the, uh, to accept the bearings. 
uh, these are markets bearings and it's quite simple how to solder this so basically we take some flux which you can see in front of me here paint brush bit of flux around where we're going make sure it's all the way around the bearing plenty of flux The solder I'll be using is 145 degree solder, which you can see there. This is from Eileen's Emporium. We have an iron which is up to temperature. Just taking a little bit on the soldering iron, holding it flat, so let it flow around the bearing. It will come out nicely on the other side. You should have a nice ring of solder around the outside of the bearing, which you can just about see there. And it is still quite hot. You have to have some uh, asbestos fingers or very hard skin on your fingers to actually uh, hold it when it's quite warm. So you might want a third hand or something to uh, clamp it down or to hold it down. But you can see that's all nicely soldered uh, to the chassis. You can clean it up afterwards and we'll just go on and finish off the other three bearings on this chassis. So there we have all four bearings now soldered onto the uh, chassis frames. Now, next stage is going to be fitting the spacers. Now, these spacers are from uh, Alan Gibson again. Uh, they have been folded, as you can see, and drilled. I've also taken about 1.4 millimeters off the sides just to close it up a little bit because um, it'd be slightly too wide. Um, so what I've basically done is measured the old chassis, which you can see here. And I've measured the chassis in terms of how deep the spaces are on this one, which is about two and a bit millimetres. I've also measured the centre point of the attachment hole, which is on the spacer itself. So I've measured that with a micrometer or a vernier or whatever you call it. And I've scored lines on the edge of the uh, on the other side of the uh, brass frame which will tell me how high I will need to solder this this is the back spacer so that will need to go along the edge of that line or just under that line and then the one which is running this way marks the center point of the uh, hole now the nice thing about brass it's nice and shiny 
so when you tack it in position you can see in the reflection where that middle line is reflecting on the actual spaces so that will line up with the centre of this hole um, which is a nice little um, little feature really um, so those are the next things to go on and we'll sort of them onto one side of the chassis frames first and then what we'll do is we'll get a small jig which uh, goes through the axle holes and uh, basically clamps it together make sure it's square and then the next thing I'll show you is how we make sure that um, frames and the chassis is actually square and it is all level, flat and straight. So a few minutes later I've now soldered on the spaces onto one side of the chassis which you can see there. The front one is a little bit more difficult from the rear one because there's not so much to hold, um, hold the actual spacer in place while soldering it. So few burnt fingers um, but you can see on this one again a nice bead of solder around the opposite side of solder from the other side as you can see and um, that's held nicely in place so the next bit will be the part of the jig so you need to put the two um, jig spacers in the axle holes bolt them together make sure it's nice and true and straight. Um, a little tip I've pinched off of a video which I've seen online uh, which was by I think it was Tony Wright he uses a piece of mirror glass uh, so if you've got an old mirror laying around somewhere um, it's best to use that to make sure it's nice and straight instead of a table or a piece of wood like I have here it's best to use that because then you will know it is absolutely flat no rocking or rolling or, or whatever on the chassis and make sure it's all nice and square. So when I've jigged it all up, soldered it together, um, then what I will do is go on to showing you um, basically just making sure you have enough clearance in the bearings etc to make sure your wheels turn nice and easily and freely as well. Okay, in the last part, as you saw, we were just about to solder the double O spaces in between the two frames or the two sides. Uh, you can see I've gone a little bit further than that at the moment. Um, you can see I've added all the brake rigging and also all the extra bits of detail which have been nicked off the old chassis here. Um, you can also see I've soldered the old mo uh, motor mount on the top as well. Um, so it's come along quite a long way um, since last saw it uh, in fact this is about two or three days later this uh, section is being filmed um, but uh, I've also been waiting for a few bits to turn up as well just to show you uh, some areas as well which uh, I mentioned beforehand now to ensure smooth running of this chassis um, obviously you have to get it flat and straight and we did just about manage to get it about flat and straight and that's been checked on a mirror which uh, is obviously a glass mirror so it's nice and flat so it won't distort or anything like that a nice flat surface to check if there's any wobble or there's any unevenness or, or, or lack of squareness in the chassis uh, but that all checked out okay so what I need to do as I mentioned before we need to remount the bearing holes now these bearings are slightly tight on this when I first um, soldered them in the axle wouldn't quite go through the hole uh, so I have ordered from Eileen's Emporium this is a reamer now reamers are used to deburr holes and just ensure the size of the hole is correct uh, this is a 1 8th of an inch um, reamer uh, which is about 3 Point one millimeters, I think. Um, basically, the job is it just goes in the holes and make sure you have a nice clearance that's running in and out. It should have a hole on uh, a handle on the end, sorry. Um, but I've lost mine somewhere. I don't know where it is. So I'm just going to show you by hand, just rimming it out nice and slowly, making sure there's no burrs or anything on there to ensure a nice 
round and smooth hole as well um, and also a nice working tolerance as well um, so to ensure that that runs properly we'll just slot the wheels back through the holes and this is the sort of crunch bit if you know your chassis is going to work quite well or not you can also see I've soldered the rods and uh, done the rods as well the connecting rods on the wheels which was quite simple to do there Alan Gibson uh, universal rods so we go on 040s or 060s and uh, also while well, I'm on the rods as well um, these also require a similar amount of work as to the bearings so the holes on the um, connection rod will need fettling slightly to ensure a smooth run with no uh, uh, no tightness in the movement uh, when I originally put them on it was tight at uh, quarter past and quarter two um, so I've taken them off room them out, fold them slightly and it should be a lot better now. So what I will do is I'll just bolt on the other side and we'll check if it's nice and smooth and it runs okay. Okay a couple of seconds later I've now screwed and attached the wheels. Now these wheels go on uh, sort of self-quartering axles so they're Romford axles with the square ends uh, and the wheels have a square um, locating bit on the back of them so it's nicely click in there not too badly um, so as you can see wheels are on this side with the rod and the wheels are on the other side with the rod as well and as you can see no problem at all nice and smooth on the table and also flicking it as it goes around to make sure it uh, it moves okay and also it's probably worth mentioning as well on the motor and the gearbox you can use the reamer on the actual hole on the gearbox as well to make sure that's not too tight for your um, axle to go through but so far it looks like we have a really good chassis there's no rock or no unevenness in the chassis so that means we've done a good job I've also added uh, pickup strips on the inside you can see here some um, PCB board on the inside to mount the pickups on and wires etc uh, for all the electrical pickups etc and that will be sort of uh, the next stage after painting priming etc anyway I hope this uh, little video has been of use to you if you're doing any soldering or um, kit building on chassis etc and I hope it helps um, there should be some more uh, workbench videos in the near future and uh, any ideas or anything you want covered please post in the comments below and I'll see what I can do um, please support these videos or you know, I might not even bother doing any more but uh, if it's of use please watch, share, give it a like and we'll see what we can do if we can do any more thanks for watching and see you in the next one hopefully